Happy day. I'm Dr. Paula Newsom. And I'm registered nurse Tracy Young. And together we're the educational faculty for Knockout Diabetes, where K stands for knowledge, N stands for nutrition, O stands for ocular health, and C stands for coaching. So right now I'm going to walk you through some deep breath exercises and this is very important to take some deep cleansing breaths throughout the day. You may be stressed out, you may have a challenging situation and you just need to calm down for a moment. And so this is something that you can do anytime throughout the day. Did you know that you can control your blood pressure mm. by breathing? Did you know that you can de-stress? by breathing, you know that you can actually um, not necessarily engage a lot of endorphins, mm -hmm. but you can even change your mood yes. by breathing. That breath is so very powerful. So this is, this is probably one of the most important exercises that we can share with you. Absolutely. So as we walk through these deep breaths, breathing exercises. I want to make sure that you're in a quiet and calm environment. Have a chair that has some back support, maybe arm support if you need it. Your feet should be placed flat on the floor with your legs uncrossed. And also if you want to relax back in your chair to have your back support it, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes throughout this segment to get yourself ready for the deep breathing exercises. You're going to hear me say inhale and exhale and kind of give you a guide as to how long to hold your breaths and exhale. But I do want you to keep in mind to still do what is within your comfort level, especially if this is your first time going through deep breathing exercises. I want to make sure that you're also breathing in through your nose and exhaling out through your mouth. And as we go through through the exercises, I'll make sure to guide you. So let's go ahead and get started. So close your eyes and here we go. Take a deep breath in, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, make sure you're inhaling through your nose, and exhale, blowing out that cleansing breath through your mouth, and inhale again, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale through your nose, and exhale through your mouth. Inhale. And exhale. Make sure you keep your feet flat on the floor. Inhale. And last one, exhale. Wonderful. How do you feel? Excellent. Right? Excellent. It's such a great exercise that you can practice at any time to kind of help yourself be calm and come down from any kind of stressful day or an event that you're having or just to kind of clear your mind of any negative thoughts you may be having. I actually even inhale and exhale even slower. Mm -hmm. I even just kind of relish mm -hmm. that breath. So I even do it at a slower count. Absolutely. Because my day is so hectic that I don't want that same speed. Mm -hmm. I want I to slow really, it down. yes. Absolutely. So you can do these exercises at your own pace. Um, it is important to uh, have your exhale be a little bit longer than your inhale to really blow out any of that negative energy or any of that old air that's kind of circling, uh, th circulating through your lungs. So thank you so much for watching these breathing exercises. We want you to be well, stay healthy, and stay the course as we knock, knock out, out diabetes. diabetes. Happy day and welcome to our program, Knock Out Diabetes. I am registered nurse Tracy Young and I'm here today to walk you through our weekly exercise regimen and introduce you to our Knock Out Diabetes community.
One of our program goals is to increase your activity to 150 minutes per week. That breaks down to about 30 minutes a day, and you can get that 30 minutes in each day by breaking that down in 10 minute increments after each meal. By exercising after each meal, that will give you really good effects on helping to lower that blood glucose throughout the day. I do want to give you a couple of reminders before we get started. Make sure that before you start any exercise program, you do consult with your health care provider. You want to make sure that you adjust your medication appropriately as exercising does bring down your blood glucose numbers. You may have any snacks that are needed to combat any hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. You want to make sure that you have a bottle of water or something next to you so that way you can stay hydrated. Some symptoms of hypoglycemia can include shakiness, feeling dizzy, blurred vision, or being excessively thirsty. So please be mindful and pay attention to your body and the, your body's cues as we go through the video. You can pause this at any time and make sure that you work at your own pace. Let's go ahead and get started. So first we're gonna start with our warm up. It's very important to do a warm up. That way you can get your body ready for the exercise that we're getting ready to do. And warm up is going to include exercises that are very low intensity just to get your muscles and your body ready for movement. Our first warm up exercise is going to be the shoulder squeeze. We're going to squeeze our shoulders to the back and we're going to do 10 reps. Let's get started. Very good. Our next exercise will be exercising our neck. And we used to do the neck roll, but now we are going to take one ear and touch it to the shoulder and do that on the opposite side as well. And then take our chin and put it to our chest and then also move our head to the back. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate that. Let's get started. Excellent. The next warm up exercise we'll do is arm circles. You're going to have your arms right out to the side of you. We're going to circle 25 seconds in one direction and then 25 seconds in the opposite direction. Let's get started. Forward. and backwards. And arms down. Great job. Make sure that you take time to see how are you feeling. Take a check-in whether or not you need to take a break, hydrate with some water, or continue going. You can pause this video at any time.
Our next warm-up exercise is going to be high knees. And for this exercise, you will hold your hands out in front of you and touch your knee to, eat to your hand for each repetition. If you are unsteady or you need a little bit of support, you can use a wall next to you or you can use a chair. For this exercise, we will do 20 repetitions. Let's go ahead and get started. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Great job. Our next exercise is going to be side stretches. And for this exercise, we are going to stretch to one side. We're gonna do that five times and hold each repetition for five seconds and then do it again on the opposite side. So we're gonna start going this direction first. Let's get started. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Opposite side. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Very good. Now that we're finished with our warm up, we're going to move into our exercise pieces. Our first exercise is gonna be the good old sit up. So we're gonna sit on the floor with your feet flat on the floor. And if you need anything to hold your feet down, or if you're working out with someone, you can enlist their help to kind of hold your feet down. And we're gonna go ahead and do three sets of 10 sit-ups for this exercise. You're going to place your hands behind the bottom of your behind the bottom of your head and when you sit up, you're going to push your chin straight up to the ceiling. That way you get really good form. So let's go ahead and get started. All right.
Our next exercise is going to be the bicycle. For this, we have the similar position as the sit-up, but we're gonna lay flat on our back with our feet at a 90 degree angle as we move our legs as if we are riding a bicycle. We're gonna do two sets of 30 seconds for these. Let's go ahead and get started. Our next exercise is the plank exercise. This exercise is really going to help with your core muscle and core muscle control. For this exercise, you are going to be on your stomach. You are going to have your elbows nice in front of you, and you're also going to have your feet on your toes behind you. We're going to push up in the plank position and hold this position for 15 seconds, and we will do this two times. Let's go ahead and get started. Our next exercise is going to be the bridge or what we call hip extension. And for this exercise, you will be seated on the ground with your feet flat on the floor. Our backs are also going to be flat on the floor and we're going to lift our hips up to the ceiling. For this exercise, we're going to do three sets and hold them for 10 seconds each. Let's get started. Place your hands flat on the floor and place your feet about hip width apart. And when you're ready, we'll go ahead and lift straight up. So for our next exercise, we are going to do tricep extension. So you'll see that we do have weights here, but I want you to know that this exercise can be done without weights. You can use anything that you have at your home, such as a coffee mug or a can or anything that you have to just give a little bit of weight. And if you don't want to use weight at all, or if you have any kind of restrictions to this, you don't have to use weights, but we are going to use them for the purpose of this video. So with this, what we're going to do is hold this weight in our hands. We're going to place our arms back behind our heads with our elbows pointing straight up to the air, and then we are going to extend. We're going to do this 10 times, and we're going to do it for three sets. So let's get started.
Our next exercise is going to be the bicep curl. Again, we do have our weights here, but the bicep curl can be done or modified with a can or a coffee mug or anything that you have at your home to give you a little bit of extra weight. This exercise can also be done without any weight at all by simply just moving your arms to get that mobility in your joints. Now, we will be demonstrating single bicep curls, but you can also do a double bicep curl where you hold your can or your weight in your hand and you simply move up and down like this. So there are many ways to modify this exercise but still get the benefit. We are going to do 10 curls on each arm. We're going to start with our right arm first and then move to our left arm. So let's go ahead and get started. Awesome, switch arms. Very good. Our next exercise is going to be the jumping jack. We're gonna do three sets of 10. Let's go ahead and get started. Ready? Now it's time to cool down. And this is a very important part of any exercise as it helps your body recover from the exercises that we did previously or in any workout that you participate in. So now we're gonna start with the abdominal stretch. For this stretch, you are going to have your hands flat on the floor, your shoulder, your elbows about shoulder width apart, and we're going to push up to stretch our abdominal cavity. And what we're gonna do is stretch for about 10 seconds and do this three times. Let's go ahead and get started, okay? Our next cool down stretch is going to be the sit and reach. So for this, you're gonna sit on the floor with your feet straight out in front of you and try to pull your feet back to your knees so they're kind of at a 90 degree angle or a little bit more so you feel that stretch right in the back of your legs. We're then going to reach to touch our toes and we're gonna hold this stretch for 10 seconds and we're gonna do it three times. Ready? and relax, and again. And relax, and again. And relax. For our final cool down activity, we're going to breathe in for a count of eight and breathe out for a count of eight. For this activity, you will sit on the floor and if you can, cross your legs or just in any kind of comfortable position that suits you. We are going to breathe in and we're gonna raise our arms above our head and then we will count to eight and then we will breathe out and bring our arms down for another count of eight and we'll repeat this three times. Let's go ahead and get started. Go. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. 
and breathe out. Awesome job completing this workout with Knockout Diabetes. As always, we want you to be well, stay healthy, and stay the course as we knock, knock out, out diabetes. diabetes. Happy day. I'm Dr. Paula Newsom. And I'm registered nurse Tracy Young. And together we are the educational faculty for the Knockout Diabetes Family, where K stands for knowledge, N stands for nutrition, O stands for ocular health, and C stands for coaching. I'm excited today because we're going to talk about microvascular issues that occur in diabetes, people with diabetes. So microvascular issues can affect our eyes, our teeth, our feet, and our kidneys. We're talking about those organs in our bodies that have those very small, small vessels. Microvascular issues. We're talking about the feet in this one because it's very important and it's because it's so far away from the heart and the brain. Also, we're talking about teeth, which are relatively close to the brain, because we want you to pay particular attention to that organ. Absolutely. So let's start with talking a little bit about the kidneys. And this is where you're working now Absolutely. in the hospital. Absolutely. So the kidneys are very important organs in our bodies. Um, they are responsible for filtering blood and also removal of waste from our bodies. Um, the kidneys are a part of our urinary system. So that's going to be, those are the organs that are going to help you eliminate um, urine and waste from your body. And they're also responsible for maintaining that balance of sodium. So they either retain sodium mm -hmm. or they release sodium and water making urine. Absolutely. And they are so critical in controlling our blood pressure. Absolutely. So the kidneys um, make a hormone that helps and cues the uh, production of bone marrow and also blood cells in our bodies. Um, and so that really helps prevent um, anemia in our bodies. It also helps regulate the sodium and potassium, calcium and phosphorus in our bodies, which are very important uh, nutrients and minerals that we need. It also prevents the loss of proteins through our urine. And when we have that uh, loss of proteins in our urine, um, that is pretty critical and it's not a good sign. Absolutely. 40% uh, of people develop proteinuria over time, and that's passing those large proteins. And as we talk about in one of our other modules, proteins are necessary for building body mass. Mm -hmm. um, and so this ultimately may lead to kidney failure. Absolutely, so you wanna make sure that you're staying hydrated, so that way you have enough fluids in your body uh, to, help with that, uh, to help with that filtering system in your kidneys. Um, and some of the symptoms of early kidney failure, kidney damage can be very subtle uh, you, and very vague. So you may not even know that they're happening. Um, so you just may not feel well, you could feel kind of tired, um, um, things like that and so your kidney function may appear to be normal um, but it can be fatal if it's left untreated. My father died of uh, kidney failure and it's a very um, uh, undaunting um, process to watch as you watch the person go yes. through. He had type 2 diabetes. Um, some symptoms that you also get with mm -hmm. kidney failure include foggy brain, mm -hmm. uh, poor appetite, weight loss, dry, itchy skin, and muscle cramps. Absolutely. And again, it's because of the uh, the balance that occurs by right. the kidneys in terms of their filtering. Absolutely, and uh, one of the things we'll talk about a little bit is your blood pressure with your kidneys and why it's so important to maintain a normal blood pressure because those vessels, and um, that's what we're talking about, microvascular, these are small vessels that are running this filtration system in your kidneys, and if your blood pressure is too high, it can really damage and rupture those vessels. Absolutely. You can also get fluid retention. Uh, and when you start getting fluid retention around your ankles and feet, mm -hmm. you probably should go have that checked. Absolutely. Um, if you get puffiness around the eyes, that's also another sign. Mm -hmm. And then urinary frequency. Yep. 
and anemia with paleness, mm -hmm. um, and then just not feeling well, general malaise. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and also with the urinary frequency, it could be that you're using the restroom too much, that you're eliminating too much or not enough. So you really want to make sure that you're using the restroom throughout the day. And if you start to notice that you're not going as often um, and you're still taking in a lot of uh, fluids and you are hydrating properly, but you're not eliminating, that can also be a sign. Absolutely. And so I was kind of curious mm -hmm. about what percentage of chronic diseases mm. are due from lifestyle it's a good one. changes. And I found out that 70% wow. of chronic diseases are due to things that we can change. And the three ones that they mentioned were smoking, a healthy diet, uh, maintaining a healthy weight, and exercise, exercising regularly. Mm -hmm. Those are things that we can do just... Absolutely. Just, yeah, and they're part of our program. Yes. And then stop drinking or limiting alcohol intake. Absolutely. Um, while people, especially in the United States, like to do a lot of binge drinking, mm -hmm. it's just not healthy. It's not healthy for And long-term, it really can cause major issue. Absolutely. So the next uh, part of our body that we're going to talk about is the feet. And so as Paula mentioned earlier, uh, we're talking about the feet because of peripheral neuropathy. And so even though the vessels aren't as small, they are very far away from our heart. And a lot of that neuropathy is with our neurosystem. And so those are very small pathways that we have. And if you are experiencing any kind of peripheral neuropathy, things that you're going to see are decreased circulation um, and also decreased oxygen um oxygen being carried to those parts of your body. And remember, if you've got cholesterol lining mm -hmm. those vessels, it's hard for good, clean blood to get through to it anyway. Mm -hmm. I often use... Um, the analogy for my patients with diabetes, I typically talk to them about a um, the arterial system as being a water uh, hose. Absolutely. And if the blood sugar is up, you're not dealing with water going through the water hose now. Now you're talking about mud going through. And then if you've got sludgy uh, cholesterol plaque lining those blood vessels, mm -hmm. then it's even more difficult for the mud, which is the hyperglycemic state, to get through to the lower extremities. Thus, you get swelling mm -hmm. in your lower extremities. When you get that, it's called diabetic neuropathy, mm -hmm. and it's defined as a loss of feeling in the feet and lower legs. Absolutely. And you also get a loss of sensation, um, and, in, and it increases the risk for major foot injury without even knowing, knowing you it. have it. Absolutely. Which is really, really uh, important. Uh, Nurse Tracy and I met doing a diabetes education program mm -hmm. here at my office for my patients um, and we just clicked immediately but I remember one of the sessions that you did mm -hmm. on feet yes. and it was so good um, so at any rate so one of the uh, stories that I often tell about peripheral neuropathy in uh, patients with diabetes, uh, when I was working at a hospital, we had a patient come in and he was ultimately admitted for sepsis, which is just an infection uh, throughout the body, but it stemmed from a thumbtack in the bottom of his foot. And this person, we're talking about uncontrolled diabetes. Um, his glucose reading was into the 500, so wow. it was very high, um, and he was not taking his oral uh, medications or insulin. So this person lives at home by themselves. They stepped on a thumbtack, have that decrease, decrease in sensation um, in his foot and it got infected. So when we were doing his head to toe assessment, took those socks off of his feet and right away you could see that this is where the infection was coming from and that thumbtack was still there and he could not feel it. Wow. So it was very serious to make sure that you were checking your feet every day. 
So diabetes causes blood vessel and nerve damage in the legs and feet with decreased circulation and oxygen to the lower extremities. And you also have an increased risk for bunions, mm -hmm. corns, and hammer calluses, toes. yeah, hammer toes, ingrown toenails, and skin dryness. Absolutely. So all those things that make your feet not cute and ready for sandals. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so true. Um, so, you know, it's also very important to, uh, you know, we talk about your toenails and trimming them uh, and just making sure that you don't injure your feet and not know it. Um, there's a lot of over-the-counter preparations that you can use for corns, but you really want to make sure that you are seeing a podiatrist, uh, that you're having a professional take a look at your feet, assess your feet, and giving you a good game plan on what to do um, because another uh, complication with that neuropathy and having an injury to your foot where it's already decreased circulation, mm -hmm. decreased uh, sensation is if you do get an injury or a wound there, it's also going to be slower to heal. Right. So just like Tracy was mentioning, the gentleman that uh, the patient that she was talking about that had a loss of sensation and had a thumbtack in mm -hmm. their foot. That just blows my mind because um, there's also a loss of sensation and it increases the risk for major foot injury without even knowing it. Right. But what um, is even more important is that we're really trying to stop with amputations yes. because we know that once you have the first amputation, the risk of having the second amputation is so much greater. Absolutely. And we want to prevent that because that really does impact the quality of life. Um, there's just nothing more than not losing your independence. Absolutely. So. Um, another uh, good tip for maintaining great foot care is to make sure that you have good shoes. Um, so you want to make sure that your shoes have enough padding, that they are offering you good support, um, because you know you don't want a shoe that's fitting too snug and rubbing yeah. against your feet, especially if you're a person that is experiencing any kind of peripheral peripheral neuropathy, uh, then you don't want anything that's going to really be rubbing on your feet, but you also don't want your feet, your shoes to be too large where your feet are flopping around in your shoes. So they need to fit great and also have good support. And you want to maintain good foot hygiene. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you clean your feet on a regular basis. Um, and then you can also use moleskin or pads mm -hmm. to prevent rubbing at pressure points if you should need to. Absolutely. And then um, you may need heel support as well. Absolutely. But the foot needs to be supported. And I think the bottom line on that is find someone who specializes in fitting people for shoes. Right. For people with diabetes and use them to help you select a good pair of Absolutely. shoes. Absolutely. And make sure uh, to check with your insurance provider on any benefits that they may be able to offer you to help with financial assistance with uh, not only finding a provider, but also paying for any kind of orthotics should. or shoes that you need, right. should you need them. And then also monitor for any problems that you may have. Pain or numbness anywhere mm -hmm. is a warning sign, and don't mm -hmm. sit on it act on it. Make sure that you respond and call and get an appointment immediately. Uh, blisters, corns, warts, anything are warning signs. Make sure you pay attention. And then any discomfort you have when you're walking is not good. Mm -hmm. And then what about bleeding? Yeah, you definitely want to be on the lookout for bleeding. Uh, one thing I like to recommend is if you can, wear white socks or just make sure that your socks are clean. And that goes along with that hygiene because the only way to detect if you're having any kind of bleeding, whether it's cracking in between your toes or on your heels, is to take a look at it every day. And if Absolutely. you have on white socks, it's a lot easier to identify. Right. Also, if you have an injury or some type of open area on your foot that doesn't heal after two days, that is mm -hmm. disconcerting and you do need to call your provider. Absolutely. Uh, dark or blackened areas on the foot or the toes are also warning signs. Yes. And any change that looks different or numbness anywhere in the foot area is a warning sign. Absolutely. 
So going back to just making sure to reiterate that we're wearing good shoes that are supportive, they um, have good padding in them or arch support if you need it. Make sure that you're having good skin care uh, with your feet and checking them every day. Absolutely. Now, now we're getting into mm. something that is near and dear to me, yes. and that is the eyes, which are the windows to the body. And just so you'll know, the eyes are the only place in the body where we can directly look at arteries, veins, and nerves without physically cutting. So we can tell a lot about your general health in addition to the health of your eye just by looking at the inside of your eye. So I'll walk into the room and when we walk in, we have a picture of the person's retina mm -hmm. up on the on the computer screen. Very cool. And the first thing, thank you. <laughs> That's why we're at Advantage. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the commercial. But at any rate, one of the first things I talk to patients about is what's going on with them. And they go, look at me like, how do you know mm -hmm. that? Do you know Madam Cleo? <laughs> and I'm like, no. <laughs> you cannot it's hide. all right here and it's here here on this screen and yes. this is you and your eyes. So one of the first signs of diabetes is a change in your vision. I know there are two people in particular that I love dearly. One is my father and the other is my pastor's wife that we detected diabetes on uh, in the exam room. Mm -hmm. You know, we said, you know, you're prescribed. And actually another person who's just a really good friend who was in one of our classes, mm -hmm. um, we detected diabetes on them because we had been seeing them for a long period of time and we noted that their prescription had changed a lot. So when you notice a change in your prescription, right. it is a warning sign mm -hmm. that the person may need to have their blood sugar checked. Fortunately, we have glucometers in the office and we can check blood sugars right here on site. Yes. So we can do that. But when the blood sugar goes up or is high, the lens on the inside of the eye imbibes the sugar right and it becomes like a dry sponge going wet it just gets larger mm -hmm. so the prescriptions change and that's one of the tip off one of the tip off signs of Absolutely. a person with diabetes I don't really want to like talk so much but that I take is. over it's okay. so I'm gonna shut up well you know and understandable I mean this is this, <laughs> this is what your I do specialty every day. This is what that's I do every right day. that's I'm sorry. right and who better to talk about it you know yeah. and this is why we have ocular health in the knockout diabetes program because it is so important and especially talking about microvascular I mean we have these very small vessels in our eyes and it is so important uh, to make sure that they're being checked because the thing about diabetes is it can go undetected. Absolutely. So you may not feel um, any symptoms. You may not have that pain. Right. You may not you know, have those things in the beginning. And so getting at least your annual eye exam and having you know, your practitioner, your provider looking um, into your eyes is so important um, because as the disease progresses, uh, you really can tell that those blood vessels are getting weakened. And what happens when they weaken is they start to leak. Mm -hmm. But what we do know through studies is that you can prevent that from occurring if you keep your blood sugar mm -hmm. lower than 8.0. Yes. So it's really about 8.4, 8.5, but I like to say 8.0 because nobody listens. <laughs> Anyway, so they always take a little bit of liberty. So rather than giving them the exact amount, mm -hmm. I always like to go a little, a little lower, lower so that we can maintain. But that actually equates to 214 on a meter mm -hmm. or roughly 200. 200. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 200. <laughs> So in terms of prevention, what we know, you don't have to go on to get diabetic retinopathy. We know that mm -hmm. that is one of those lifestyle changes that only you and you alone can make. It is totally up to you. When your blood sugar is over 200, 214, you are opening yourself up for the likelihood of those blood vessels weakening and then leaking and then 
causing ultimately blindness if they leak in the wrong part of the eye. Absolutely. So good control of blood glucose is so important. Absolutely. But also, I think it's really important that they um, control some other things as well. Oh, absolutely. So just lifestyle changes in general. If you are uh, controlling your blood pressure, controlling your cholesterol level, yeah. all of these things are hand in hand. And one of one things that we see just even in teaching this program is participants that come in with diabetes, they typically have a secondary diagnosis as right. well as high uh, blood pressure or high cholesterol. And so those are all things that can be changed or influenced by your lifestyle. Absolutely. And then as Nurse Tracy said, get regular mm -hmm. exams. It's just so important. The quickie and uh, no disrespect, but you know, there is a virtual exam is not what I'm talking about. Right. Right. I am not talking about anything that you do over the internet. I'm um, talking about um, an in-person, <laughs> yeah. in-face exam where somebody can lay their eyes on you to see what's really going on. Absolutely. Um, and then understand that you may be more at risk for other diseases mm -hmm. like glaucoma and or cataracts because you do have diabetes. That's really, really, yeah. really important. Yeah, this stuff so, is serious. And I, I think people know that, but it's good to just get that information and really have it hit home because it's very serious and just changing a couple of things here and there can really affect your overall health. Absolutely. Just reducing. Yeah. Right. Like if you just took out a soda or two sodas right. a day, right. you can reduce your caloric load. It's very so impactful. That, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's just <laughs> not that it sounds more daunting than it is. Right. The way you take over an elephant or tackle an elephant mm -hmm. is one, one bite. bite at a time. Absolutely. Right. So the next organ we're going to talk about is our teeth, um, teeth and diabetes. So untreated diabetes can definitely cause a reduced amount of saliva. Uh, it can cause you to be dehydrated. You can have dry mouth, uh, gingivitis, bleeding of the gums, um, just any kind of issues with um, maybe even tasting foods um, and delayed wound healing. Right. And we've mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. So it's the um, actually action on the nerves. Mm -hmm. The nerves are just not as sensitive as they used to be. Right. And so consequently, you can't feel them like you used to be able to. Absolutely. And so just know that self-care, especially as it relates to teeth, is yes. so important. And while we are masking these days, it's still important to make sure that you floss. Mm -hmm. They say after every meal, I think they're satisfied if you do it once or twice a day. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to floss after every meal. I don't have floss at work so and I eat at work so I don't yeah. floss if, after every meal but understand that one out of every five cases of total tooth loss is linked to diabetes. Absolutely. And you really need to come up with a plan with your dental care provider. And again, this is not one of those virtual things where you can look. You really need to go and visit your dental provider on a regular basis. Absolutely. Yes. I do feel like mouth care and even eye care is something that we really take for granted. Absolutely. You know, it's very easy to say, oh, I need my annual physical. So you go in and you see your doctor, your nurse practitioner, whatever, but it's very important to not forget about the smaller organs that right. you really need a specialist to take right. a look at. So making sure you get your eyes checked, make sure you go to the dentist and, right. you know, have them take x-rays of your mouth and let you know what's going on because you don't want to lose your teeth. Absolutely. Um, we don't want to lose our feet. We don't mm -hmm. want to lose our vision. Right. And all of those things can seriously be impacted by Absolutely. not making lifestyle changes. Absolutely. And that's why we want you to monitor your vision daily. We want you to monitor your food intake daily. We want you to monitor your blood glucose daily and at different times during mm -hmm. the day. Absolutely. Um, keep up with your program materials. We want you to write in a journal when you're feeling in control and when you're feeling out of control. And we also want you to add as much as you can mm -hmm. so we can see if there are any recurring patterns that are occurring when you're feeling out of control or in control. Absolutely. And be open to change behavior. Where are you? on that continuum of change. And we want you especially to check your feet daily. And if you have physical constraints,
restraints that don't allow you to look at your feet daily or pull your feet up so you can look at them, put a mirror on the floor or have a loved one check your feet on a daily basis. But it's important. I really like the white sock uh, mm -hmm. tip. That was excellent. Absolutely. Uh, we also want you to do at least 150 minutes of activity a day. So that's 30 minutes a day or 10 times, three times a day, uh, but really get that activity and exercise in. Right. And make sure you attend at least 80% of these classes and or modules. And if you miss a class, make it up. Mm -hmm. We want you to fully participate in the Knockout Diabetes Program because we want you to be well, stay healthy, and stay the course as we knock, knock out diabetes. diabetes.